According to my iTunes, I have listened to Monster by Dodie 473 times. The song is roughly about four minutes in length, which would be equal to 31 and a half hours. Now, Final Cut doesn't tell you how many times you've watched something whilst you're editing it, thank God, but I think it's safe to say about another couple hundred. What might sound like a weird flex is actually just an indication of how absorbed I have been in directing this music video. Now, I always thought if I directed a music video, it's probably gonna look a lot like the music videos I'm inspired by. Michel Gondry, in particular, does these amazing conceptual music videos that often use special camera trickery or interesting practical effects. But when I listened to Monster, I slowly started to see more of a narrative piece unravel in my brain. Dodie uses all of these clever metaphors for seeing yourself and your significant other as these grotesque monsters with scales and sharpened teeth when the relationship comes to an ugly end. So I wanted to take all of that cleverness and turn it into something very literal. Monster Dating, a brand new television game show coming to your telly box very soon. I'm gonna be doing a bit of a deep dive on this music video to show you some of the fun behind the scenes elements. So I would definitely recommend you watch Monster by Dodie before you watch this. But if you're already initiated, then we can start from the beginning. <laughs> The very first thing I did was talk to Sammy and Sophie, the producers on the project, and we discussed the general direction of the video, the fun idea that surrounds monsters going on dates, essentially. Then I went away into my think tank, and I came out with quite a depressingly real story about a monster who goes through a rough breakup and is desperate to fill the empty void in his chest with anything, ASAP as possible. Then we see the progression of this monster going on all these frankly terrible dates until we slowly start to see him unravel and self-destruct. Oh, what you thought a video about monsters was gonna be a happy, silly, fun time video with Shrek doing the electric boogaloo? I don't think so, pal. With that dark idea at its core, that gave us the opportunity to contrast that by painting the colorful, whimsical, kick the PJ aesthetic over the whole thing. I put a lot of thought into these things. All right, from the absolute very beginning, there were a couple of images that had stuck in my head that I was adamant about. The very opening, the first image you see of the video. It had to be this close-up on this rough looking dude looking destroyed and then the camera would slowly track back to reveal that he is in fact a monster. I just thought that this would really suit the pace to the opening of the song. The other image I saw from the very beginning was our main monster Ness seeing his ex-girlfriend after the getting over it period and realizing that he wasn't actually over it. So when he goes over to talk to her, he sees that she's moved on, which sets up for this beautifully awkward moment where the camera just tracks in on each of their faces one by one. I was really keen to early on establish a tone of a bit of realness and also some darkness and also some weird comedy to kind of wrap it all up. Then we started laying down the groundwork for the video. It almost felt like Lego. We were plucking these ideas and plugging them into different parts of the song to see what felt right. And then, Oh, and then, as soon as I had the idea for Ness's ex-girlfriend to physically rip his heart out, I knew the ending of the video right there and then. I knew the very last shot of the video. After Ness sees that his ex-girlfriend has moved on and he doesn't have a chance anymore, I wanted him to at least take back the one thing that could fill that void in his chest. And I wanted him to momentarily drop into this primitive monster form and grotesquely devour his heart in front of everyone. I just saw it. I just saw that in my mind. Is this normal stuff for people to be seeing? I don't know. I don't care. Something that was always gonna be very intensive was the costume builds and all the location changes. So we needed to start getting down our visuals very soon. The first thing I did was crudely sketch out some monsters I was envisioning, and I do mean crude, ranging from explosive robot to sad ghosts to puppeteered blobfish jelly brain-like creatures. And I wanted them all to have different distinct personalities. So when our main character Ness goes on these dates with them, they're gonna just be the absolute worst matches possible. Awkward silences, your date being on the phone the whole time, your date being creepy and trying to lick you. The whole shebang, all the worst dates you could possibly go on. Then I sat down with Sophie and Louie, who were the art directors on the production, and we discussed what I had ideally liked, such as what kind of functionality the monsters needed to have, and then we sort of worked towards what was actually possible. With the creature build underway, I could continue fleshing out the story and get working on the animatic. Oh boy, the animatic. <laughs> An animatic basically serves the same purpose as a storyboard. I like to use them to get a feel for the pacing of a film. My drawings in them are always super rough, like horrendously rough, like 
embarrassing to show people rough. Of course, I showed it to the key members of the crew to give them an idea of what I had in mind, but I gave Sammy Paul specific instructions to not show Dodi the animatic. I said to him, if Dodi watches this, she's gonna panic. Luckily, Sammy Paul is an honorable and trustworthy person who would never do such a thing except, oh wait, he did show Dodi after I specifically told him not to. I haven't actually watched this horror show of an animatic since we filmed the video back in July, and I didn't really want it to be on the internet, but what the hell. I thought we could watch it together. I told you the drawings were rough, I told you it was bad, but you didn't listen. And now look what's happened. Well, let's keep going. So anyway, this is the slow track back from his face to reveal horns, monster, what's going on? And she's coming around, getting ready to yank out his heart, and she slams it in her bag and she zooms out of there. So a lot of this is still quite true to the actual video itself, handing out the flyers. Also, can I just say, what is that stapler? Is that Pikachu? Is that Pikachu? I completely forgot, I drew Pikachu. Again, this wasn't really supposed to be seen by anyone, so. Oh my God. This is the reason why I said don't show it to Dodie. Sometimes I would draw things in this animatic and then really just doubt a lot about myself as a human being. Also, yes, that is Sammy Paul. Okay, so this was the monster track back where we reveal all the monsters, including Sexy Brain, which last minute I changed the name to Brienne. But this date sort of encapsulates the whole catfishing idea. He expected this and got this. <laughs> Okay, there's Creepy Frogman, Mr. Toad, played by Bertie Gilbert, would you believe? Nice, I give drinks! Again, another reason why this wasn't supposed to be seen by human eyes, ever. Also, no, we did not get the rights for Jar Jar Binks. Thanks for rubbing it in my face. Another thing we filmed and tried in the edit, but there wasn't really enough time to let it really breathe. I like the idea of Ness trying out all these different versions of himself in the mirror, pretending to be all these different kinds of person that he is just not. The idea was sweet, but we had to cut it because it didn't really fit in the video in the end. <laughs> okay, originally Ness was gonna stab himself in the hand with a fork to get the attention of Bubbles. It wasn't until like the day before the shoot, I was like, I'm not feeling this hand stab. So I said to Louie, can you quickly make me a giant cigarette? And he's just gonna burn his hand with the cigarette. Look at him go, look at him smash that plate of mashed potatoes. Jerry Seinfeld awkward leave. This is honestly the perfect example of an animatic still. I have doodled something, but it doesn't quite represent what I mean. So I've annotated a reference to that clip of Jerry Seinfeld in Kerber Enthusiasm when he's leaving the play. This bit was always, always, always in my mind gonna happen. Slow zoom on his face, slow zoom in on the poster. Arr! <laughs> Arr! <laughs> Isn't that just the saddest sight you could ever see? A lot of this is very true to the final video, you know. A lot of this was in there. Oh, sweet Jesus. Um, so there's uh, me and Dodie. So I really want to do like a Scott Pilgrim-esque moment here, where it's like Tanes, him and Snow are the only two people in this entire bar. And so he takes a deep breath, he gets the courage to go up and talk to her. It wasn't in the animatic, but on the day, I thought it'd be really sweet to have a little reverse shot of me and Dodie like looking at each other. Being like, what's that scoundrel Ness up to now? He's gonna go embarrass himself. That's what's gonna happen. New boyfriend alert. <laughs> you know what? I think Dan Layton captured that face perfectly in the final thing. <laughs> So good. Yeah, slow zoom ins, always at this moment. I always wanted it to be at this moment. And then again, this is pretty much how the rest of the video played out. He goes for the bag, he lunges, he picks it up, they tussle. Arr! This is probably the best drawing in the entire animatic. Why is the quality shifted for this specific shot? Yep, the look of utter disgust from Snow and Spike. And then the final shot, yeah, 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 yeah. that's great. <laughs> again, Dan Layton. Nailed the final look. This was so much fun. We will never speak of this animatic ever again. Is that understood? Good. Now, because I come from a background of filmmaking rather than music video making, my brain kept thinking, okay, so at this moment, we'll throw in a sound effect and it'll enhance this moment and oh wait, no, no, no sound effects. The only sound for the video is the song. So what I did was listen through to the song very, very closely and try to pick out any noises or cues or beats that I could essentially use to my advantage. For example, the beat of a drum gives you a nice powerful sound for stapling a poster on a fence. There's a very interesting drum sound that goes which to me sounds like a giant hulking robot sitting down and all of his parts rattling about. And then of course, my favorite sound in the entire song. <laughs> 
at the very end. As soon as I heard that magnificent sound, I knew the final shot of the video had to be a close up on someone's face, either screaming or looking manic. It was a very interesting challenge trying to build a bit of a soundscape without actually adding in any additional sounds. I mean, that makes it sound like it was really impressive on my side. It was more that the song was just really good to work with and has so many really, really great layers. So you know the song that plays over the credits? That is still Monster, but I asked for all the stems and then one by one just plucked out a bunch of different tracks, which left what sounds like an incredible video game rendition of Monster. <laughs> You know them, you love them. Let's talk Easter eggs. Easter eggs in anything are my favorite thing. So any opportunity I get to sneak something into something I'm making, well, you bet your goblin butt that I'm going to do that. I want to just share a few subtle things in the video. Things you might have missed. Firstly, we have to talk about the posters. So the dating posters function as a monster Tinder, if you will. Monsters hook up with one another by putting posters of themselves around the town. It's very weird. I'm aware it's very weird. Don't worry, that was the intention. So I actually did the designs for the posters myself and I knew they would be dotted around the video. So I thought I'm gonna have to hide some of the crew in there. Here are some of my favorites that you might have missed. This is, ah! Fun fact, this is actually some concept art from the animatic that got cut. When we cut Ag from the video, I just turned her into a poster instead. That's what happens. If you get cut from one of my videos, you get turned into a poster. Albert, ignore the fishy smell and we're good. Sunblush, he's a fun guy. It's a pun. It's a mushroom pun. This monster probably looks quite familiar, right? <laughs> this is my favorite one of all. This is Fart. I like the idea that Fart is a sentient fart who has been birthed and given life, but knows that it shouldn't have it. Fosbo no longer eats children. So that's, uh, that's good. Handrew, I'm just a hand. Live with it. <laughs> this is our DP Kieran doing his Famous stare. Another repossession fish here looking for freaky fishman threesome. Some real reference to Oscar's hotel there. Ooga booga. Got ya. Speak to ya. This is in fact Sammy Paul. I did not actually draw this. This is actually just a photograph I took of Sammy Paul. This is Sophie, another one of our crew members with her killer curls. All right, I was peer pressured into doing this one. What pains me the most is that it's so obviously there in the video. I'm just sorry, Dodie. I'm sorry. And finally, Swamp. Fantastic lover. The menu was actually something that was barely seen at all. But Sophie wanted some set dressing for the bar, so I quickly whipped up a menu. The bar is called the Putrid Eel, which I thought would be quite fitting. It serves caramelized eel, buttered rat, horn milk, spoiled gumbo, flaming zobs, slime and grime, salted bums. Ooh, you gotta try the salted bums. You cannot go to the Putrid Eel and not sample some of the salted bums. Electric Boogaloo, <laughs> Blamange, Stuff in a Ball. Ooh, love stuff in a bar. Toes and Jay Binks surprise. We may not have got the rights to show Jar Jar Binks, but he was referenced, damn it. The putrid eel serves sides of dead soup, freshly seasoned bodger, gabagio a la trash. I don't know what fried Elvis boys is. Billy Bongo, loaded monster bites, blockamole, sandman tears, and chips. I loved putting this together. This was so much fun. Just coming up with random names for food, like fried Elvis boys <laughs> and salted bums. Can't make this stuff up, except you can because I did. Another little Easter egg that you may have caught in the background of a few of the shots. You'll notice the bun chow and the snip diddler from Bertie's film Playground. They're just on a date together. Just together, it's just sitting together on a date. <laughs> this was actually the bun chow's final appearance in a video because we decapitated him and used the head as fun in our live show Space Trip. I miss your bun chow. Okay, so this is a much more obvious Easter egg, but it's still fun nonetheless. The PJ and Dodie cameo. I was keen to get us both in the video somewhere. So in the end, we played Ness's friends. I don't know why I did that around Ness's friends. Yeah, we're his friends. <laughs> I am, of course, a gothic crab man. And Dodie is a forest sprite with flowers growing from her forehead. I can't even take credit for these amazing looks. It was Sylvia, our makeup designer, who put these looks together and did a fantastico job. I gotta say that frankly, she made us look more beautiful than usual. I would dress up as gothic crab man every day if I could, but I can't. Sad. What else can I say? I had an absolute blast working on this video, man. I really, truly hope you did enjoy the music video for Monster. A lot of really hardworking, talented people poured a lot of effort into making this video a reality. A surreality, a surreal reality. Is that a word? Because it should be. So I wanted to say 
thank you to all those people. Hey, I want to walk in talking octopus with puppeteer tentacles and I want the light to be bathing it in purple because that's the vision. There's only so many people in the world that you can say something like that to and it seems that they all worked on this music video. <laughs> also, I want to say a huge thank you to the bomb ass goblin herself, Dodie. Without her and her music, this whole production wouldn't have even happened. So please do go listen to her new EP, Human. It's very... Now, I have purposefully not covered every tiny detail in the video because there are a fair few things that I want to leave up to interpretation. So if you have any theories or thoughts or interpretations on the video then please do leave them in the comments below and if you enjoyed this behind the scenes video then please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're new around these here parts these parts being my uh, youtube kick the pj channel the P my channel great cool <laughs> okay that's all from me stay rad and i'll see you monsters in the next video bye <laughs>